One of the most famous scientists that has ever lived on Earth is named Albert Einstein. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of him, but he discovered two big things. One of them is the theory of relativity that has basically changed the space industry, and he has also developed lasers. Now, lasers are a very big thing that are basically available in any technological device, like cameras, phones, tablets, computers, and many more. Now, Albert Einstein used to study in a very unorthodox way. He did not like going to classes. He didn't like rereading notes. He didn't like going through textbooks or anything like that based off of his biography. What he liked doing is taking equations from current mathematicians and current physicists in his time and playing around with these equations and basically trying to find other equations that would work. He would essentially solve problems that weren't originally problems. He would essentially go out and hunt for the problem and then solve it. And that's how we came up with e equals mc squared, for example, which is one of the biggest equations that we use nowadays in physics. Now, another method that you could say for his study methods is trial and error or active recall. Now, active recall is a study method that is used by actually 1.1% of the population. And research actually shows that most students that use active recall end up actually performing the best in their class. So that begs the question, what is active recall and how can I incorporate active recall in the way that I'm actually studying? So just to give you guys a brief overview, active recall is when you ask yourself a question and you have to try to retrieve the answer from it from your memory. So without looking at a textbook, without reading a notebook, without doing anything like that. So let's say I had a cardiology exam coming up, right? And I wanted to memorize or I wanted to understand how blood flow through the heart actually worked. So I would think to myself, okay, so we know that deoxygenated blood enters through the inferior and superior vena cava and it goes to the right atrium. Then it goes to that tricuspid valve. Then it goes to the right ventricle. Then it goes to the pulmonary artery and that pulmonary artery will take it to the lungs. The lungs will bring it back as oxygenated blood through the pulmonary vein, which will bring it through the left atrium, which will bring it through the mitral valve, which will bring it through the left ventricle, which will bring it through the aortic valve, and that will actually take it to the aorta, which will send it through the rest of the body. So then once I say that out loud to myself and I understand how the whole process works, that helps me be better equipped for test day so that when the actual exam comes, I already told myself that I questioned myself on it and I've already recalled it from my long-term memory. So when I actually have the exam, there's a higher chance that I'll actually be able to perform way better on the actual exam versus just rereading on my notes or highlighting or reciting it out loud right after I read it. That will not help and that will not help keep it into long-term memory. Now, a lot of people used to actually tell me when I was younger that there's either basically two ways that you could do well in school. Either you're already, you're born smart and you already have a high IQ, which wasn't in my case, or you work hard and you end up getting the good grades. Now with most people, which I would say 95% of people, including myself, is you need to work hard in order to do well in school. But the issue is if you are working hard using the wrong study methods or you're doing the wrong thing, you're essentially gonna be practicing for no reason. Think about it. Let's say you had a marathon coming up. I'm not sure how long a marathon is, maybe like 50 kilometers. I, it's somewhere around there. I'm not 100% sure. But every time you would practice for this marathon, let's say you would run three kilometers, six kilometers, eight kilometers, four kilometers, 10 kilometers max. Then the actual marathon comes up and you need to run these 50 kilometers or so. What the heck are you gonna do? Because you've never been in this situation before. And that's when active recall comes in. Think of active recall like you are practicing doing 50 kilometer runs basically every single day. So when test day comes up, you already did this 50 kilometer run already and you're essentially gonna be performing it all over again on test day. So it's gonna be literally a breeze because you've done it so many, so many times and you'll actually be able to finish the test earlier, be able to review, you'll finish the test feeling less stressed and you'll feel confident in all your answers. So it's literally a win-win all around and so in this video we're gonna be talking about the seven different methods that you can actually incorporate active recall in the way that you study nowadays to help you perform better on your exams and better on all your assessments that you're going to be doing so let's get started with the first method now the first method is actually practice problems. Now practice problems are amazing, however they only apply to specific classes. For example, organic chemistry, calculus, physics, anything that you need set stats, anything else that you need to do calculations for, practice problems will come in very, very handy because then you essentially, like I said earlier, you're putting yourself in that test switch situation now so that when actual test day comes, it's a breeze and you've already finished everything you're doing. Now the benefits of practice testing is like I said earlier, you decrease test day anxiety because you've already seen all the questions and you also play with your head. So in most classes that need practice problems, the, the information you learn is very, very basic. And then the questions that you get on the actual test are usually 
more complex and require more thinking. However, if you do already practice problems either at the same level or harder, you're already used to the playground of doing very hard practice problems. So when test day comes, either they'll be easy, which is like what you guys did in class, medium, which is not too bad, or hard. But since you either did hard or even harder practice problems, these hard, medium, and easy practice problems are gonna be a breeze and you're gonna go by them really, really, really quickly. Now, most classes will have practice problems set up for you in some way, shape, or form, but you could always find practice problems online. What I used to do for most of my classes that I didn't have you know, a lot of practice problems because I wanted to do as much as possible, I would search up the specific class and then I would search up practice problems after. 99 times out of 100, you will end up finding practice problems that work for you. And the only thing standing between you and these practice problems is your mind. It's just the mindset that you have. Do you wanna get the work done now or you don't wanna get it done? And then when the actual test day comes, you don't do well, you end up being very upset and you blame yourself. And this could have all been avoided if you did the practice problems beforehand and you end up actually doing really well on your exams. Now the next method is flashcards. Now I personally love flashcards. I'm sure you guys have know from all my videos. I talk about Anki a lot. Now Anki is an online flashcard system that is very smart. It uses an algorithm to show you different cards on different days based on how you answer them today and tomorrow. So you can either answer saying again, good, easy, or hard. And based on how you answer them, the interval of showing you the next card will show up on a different day. So let's say there was a card that I got wrong today. So tomorrow it'll Anki will show it to me and the day after. And then if I guess it good on both days, it'll show it to me again in three days and seven days. And that relates to something called the Ebbinghaus curve. Now Ebbinghaus curve is essentially how quickly you will forget things over time. And that relates to practice problems as well. And that is basically if you do something on day one, you'll probably be able to remember it on day three and then on day seven, and then again on day 11, and then day 17, day 22. And basically the more you do it, the longer the interval of you remembering a specific information becomes. So that's why doing things over a long period of time is way better than cramming at the end. Now, another way of using uh, flashcards is by making them by hand, which is not that bad. I just, I don't like it because it usually takes a lot of time. And another software called Quizlet, I also don't like it that much because it doesn't use this algorithm like Anki. If you do want to check out videos like Anki, I will have them linked above right here. So feel free to check those out. Now, another way that you could actually incorporate Active Recall is rewriting major concepts. Now, I talked about how one of my sisters actually uses this method. She is in med school now, and she uses this method like strictly. And what she does is she, she tries to memorize all the information in whatever way works, and she rewrites it out. And if you think about it, this is exactly like flashcards. The only difference is she is writing them all out. Now, there's nothing wrong with this method. It's a great method to use. You just need to find what works for you. Now, I personally like Anki just because I like flashcards because they're much quicker. However, my sister likes these rewriting these concepts because that helps keep her more secure of the knowledge and helps keep, you know, it, 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 it's very safe for her to know that she knew, knows all this content when she writes it all down. And that basically helps her perform really well on test day. Now, similarly, another method is explaining a topic to yourself out loud. So I don't know if you guys remember, but in the beginning of the video, when I was, well, I'm sure you guys probably do remember, like it was like literally like four minutes ago, if you guys are watching this video, but basically when I you know, explained the process of oxygenated and dejoxygenated blood moving through the heart, that was me explaining it out loud to myself. And if you think about it, it all relates back to essentially flashcards where flashcards you're doing it in your head or you could do it out loud but a lot of people like doing it out loud where they're pacing where they're doing things like that it just doesn't matter what method you use as long as you use one of these methods so far we have flashcards we have practice problems we have reading out loud and we have rewriting major concepts and now this comes to our fifth one which is coming up with examples now coming up with examples is actually a great way to use Active Recall because it helps you remember the information based on something that you will essentially never forget. So sometimes when I'm trying to remember a specific acronym, I'll remember someone's name somehow and relate it back to it. So one of the examples that I actually used when I was in calculus class, I would always, sometimes I would forget if it was sine over cos or cos over sine that would equal to 10. So that's kind of when Snapchat came out when I was in, I think grade 11 or grade 10, it was kind of a while ago. I'm not sure if Snapchat came out in that time, but I used to use that acronym. So Snapchat is SC. So that's how I knew that sine was over cos and that equal to 10. It was kind of a very weird way of remembering it, but it worked for me and that's how I would always remember it. And that's how I basically, I would never forget it because I would always relate it back to something that was actually, you know, sign over coast, which was snap chat. 
Now, another way that you could actually use Active Recall, which is actually kind of what I used in my last semester of school in a geriatric course that I was taking, and that is filling in the gaps between major concepts. So sometimes what I would do, because we had so many notes for that class and there were no pre-made Anki flashcards, I would make a lot of flashcards, yes. However, sometimes I would wanna make sure that I understand the actual information. So Anki helps with memorizing rote facts and you know it's very good in that, like if you wanna memorize a specific year. However, if you wanna make sure that you understand a specific concept, sometimes that would get, you know, it would get lost between the lines and I would have to figure out a way to make sure that I still understood the overall overarching concept. So what I used to do is actually go through my PowerPoint slides put a paper sheet above my laptop computer and I would actually just read the title of the page and then describe everything that I knew about that specific concept. That helped me a lot to make sure that I still understood the major overarching concepts when it related to specific things that I needed to remember for a long period of time without only using rote memorization. And the last method that we're gonna talk about was actually explaining a concept to yourself. Now, if you can't explain the concept that you learned to a fifth year old, then you actually don't understand the concept fully. Welcome to class. Now, a lot of people say that if you, you know, you can't explain it to anybody, then you essentially don't really understand the information. It does this and then that and then this result, and then this is a treatment and that is the cause, this is the effect, and it could lead to this, but not always if it could also lead to this. And that has actually found to be true. Think about it, try to memorize any information you can and then re-explain it to yourself the next day. And if you could do that, then that is great and that means you probably did 100% understand the information. However, if you couldn't explain it to yourself, try to relearn the parts that you didn't really understand really well and do the same thing for the next day. And then if it works, then you do the same thing for another three days. And then if it works, you keep, you keep, you keep increasing the interval and continue to explain it to yourself and make sure that you fully understand it. And anytime you forget a specific detail, then you would have to actually relearn that part and continue to explain it to yourself. And that's a very good way of measuring the fact that you understand the information and that you understand the concept that you just learned for any class you took. So that basically sums up the video on Active Recall. If you guys did enjoy this video, I'm sure you guys would also enjoy my other videos on Active Recall and studying in this playlist that you could find linked above right here. If you did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe because it does help me out a lot and does help support this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care and take it easy.